Gotcha. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to episode three of Top 10 Things You Didn't Know in Iceborne. I hear a lot of weird tips as I play the game where I just discover really strange things and it kind of happens naturally, you know, you just play a lot and things happen. And many of these tips, they don't deserve their own video, so I thought, hey, I'll cram it all together into one nice quick list of all the interesting things and maybe I can pop in some really useful advice for new players as well. So I hope you guys enjoy this. This is episode three, we're gonna keep it going. Let me know if you knew everything on the list if you didn't, let me know which ones you didn't know, and if you have some tips you'd like to share with the community, feel free to do so in the comment section. Let's get started with the things you didn't know. Tip number one, did you know you have to break Black Veil Valhazok's head in order for him to be affected by flash pods? So with other monsters, normally they're just always affected by the flash pod. You just fire the flash pod, they'll fall out of the sky, or they'll be stunned, whatever. But with Black Veil Valhazak, if you have not broken his head, he cannot see the flash pod. That's right, because the gunk on his face is actually hiding his eyes. Anyways, I presume that's the reason why it doesn't affect him. It makes sense to me. If you look at his head, you can see some big moldies right over where his eyes would be. Does that mean that Valhazak can't see us when he's fighting? Number two on the list is one of those nearly useless details. It's like, it's fairly close to useless, but you can't forget it once you've heard it. So, you already knew about the boomerang. Right, I'm, a, I'm assuming you already know about the boomerang. What happens is a monster's tail has a certain amount of health. You can bring the health of the tail down, and then when it's ready to be cut, you can't cut it because you have a blunt weapon. But if you brought a boomerang, you can throw the boomerang at the tail, and this will cause the tail to be cut. Well, guess what? There's a new useless way to cut tails. It's amazing. Everyone clapped their hands. So with the Resident Evil crossover, we got a gesture called Raccoon City Zombie Bite. Guess what? When your character lunges forward to take a chomp out of something, that's severed damage. So you can cut tails with the zombie bite. Amazing, right? Number three on the list might be one you've already known. It was new to me. I discovered it in one of my live streams. So you have the Celiana base, which is super efficient. You get everything you need done there. There's very little walking space between anything. However, Capcom still felt that it was necessary to throw in this completely useless door, secret pathway, whatever you want to call it. As you can see, it takes you up to the steamwork, or if you climb back down, it takes you to the front of Celiana. It's funny, I'd already played so much of the Iceborne expansion, and I only just now realized this because it's so unnecessary. I never needed a secret pathway that takes me to the steamworks, because it's very, it's, it's very, very quick to just go over and walk to the steamworks. So why would we need this? It just doesn't make any sense. So yeah, now you know there's a secret door in Celiana. Did you know that one? I really want to know who knew this one because it's so strange and it's, it's so funny that it only just now dawned on me that it exists. Tip number four comes from the comment section of the previous 10 things you didn't know video that we made. The commentators there shared a tip with us about getting your dash juice. Apparently, what you can do is take your tail raiders and send them down a path where there's going to be Bonboro and Bonboro returns dash juice. So this is a nice way to passively increase your stock of dash juice. As you guys know, dash juice is really good for bow users and for dual blade users. So it's a, it's a common, well it's not a common, but it's a very powerful item to have with you. However, you can't simply farm for it. So you typically had to trade with the Elder Melder for it. Well, this is a second way to obtain it as well to help you keep up your supply of dash juice. Tip number five is another near useless tip that's also kind of interesting. In this case, you're going to have the fight against the Resident Evil Valhazak, right? And he has the special effluvia where if you get tainted, you get turned into a zombie. Effluvia resistance decorations don't work against it. But guess what? The immunity mantle actually works against it. So you can wear the immunity mantle and be unaffected by the effluvia for a while longer. Now, the problem with that is when you are affected by the effluvia, it's almost like a buff, right? So the effluvia, it, it gives you health regen when you shoot your weapons and it gives you rock steady. So it's just kind of like, why would you ever want to, it doesn't make any sense, why would you ever want to wear immunity mantle? But it works, so now you know it, and you're never going to forget it. Number six on the list, Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. Number seven on the list is an easy one, many of you probably actually knew this, and that's going to be the Tofu Pendant from the Resident Evil crossover actually talks to you. Now the reason I added it to the list is because I'm hoping somebody in the comment section can actually tell us what the frick does that tofu actually say? I can never make out what he's saying. Uh, 
So it would be really interesting if somebody could record it and then play it back nice and slow and uh, maybe take the volume and increase the volume. I'd love to hear that and actually know what the tofu pendant is saying. Number eight on the list is going to be relevant for farming in the guiding lands. As most of you know, you would wear one level of geologist and this allows you to pick up double rewards. Most of you know this at this point. However, there was a patch, patch 11.50, and this patch fixed a lot of bugs in the game. Well, guess what? Geologist is still working, so be sure you bring it with you into the guiding lands. For those of you who hadn't tested it yet, now you know, you're welcome. Number nine on the list is going to be a nice little multiplayer tip for maybe players who play a lot of multiplayer, but they're still newer to the game and they can't figure out how the frick do you deal with all of the longsword players who constantly stun lock you. And the trick, of course, is to add one level of flinch free to your build. You can do this using a brace decoration. And finally, number 10 is probably going to be more of a recommendation. So one of the things I work really hard on are my item loadouts. I feel like item loadouts really leave a large impact in your ability to be effective in your hunts. Well, one of the things that occurred with Iceborne is we have all these new items that we're interested in using. Primarily, dung pods are added to a lot of builds, I'd say. Nullberry has become a lot more important. Herbal powder, I think herbal powder is the antidote powder, right? If you don't have herbal powder, obviously just bring antidote or whatever the antidote pill is, the equivalent of that. Even bleed too, right? So the Astera jerky, I feel, has become more important. So, uh, and, and traps have become really nice to have in pretty much all your hunts as well because you don't fight... Uh, you don't fight the Elder Dragons as much as you fight the regular Tier 1 and Tier 2 monsters again. You're doing a lot of farming, a lot of upgrading, picking up the weapons. So your item inventory is super full if you're like me. Your loadouts are full. And this really inhibits your ability to forge for materials while you're hunting. So you'll go on a hunt and there'll be a lot of nice things like Mandragora for you to gather, but your loadout's already full. What can you do to increase the size of your loadout? Go ahead and drop your armor charm and your armor talon. Remember those guys? Uh, a lot of us built those because they give you a permanent increase to defense as long as you have them in your item loadout. Well, guess what? They really don't give you that much defense and defense is, is only but defense is only nice when you're adding a ton of it at a time. So you really don't need armor charm. You really don't need armor talent. And that's that's two slots that you're throwing back into your item loadout. So go ahead and get rid of those. You're welcome. <laughs> now I'm supposed to wrap up at 10, but I'm actually going to throw in an 11th thing you probably didn't know. This is something a lot of experienced players knew, but uh, maybe newer players don't understand it. Uh, there's these things called arena quests, and there's a lot of arena quest rewards. For example, weapons that are exclusive to the arena, armor sets that are exclusive to the arena, right? And in order to play the arena, you have to go to the gathering hub, and you have to talk to the hub lass and queue up the fight. Here's something a lot of players don't know. You can't SOS for those fights. You have to invite people into your session. So you have to host a session. You can say for the session that you're going to be playing in the arena, or you can join somebody else's arena session. So you can see on screen that I'm choosing create session. And then you can see I go over to quest preference and down this list, you can see there's an option for arena. When I go to create this session, hopefully there's enough people online or somebody searching for other people to help play the arena with that they'll come and join me. If that isn't the case, I can go searching for people who are already hosting. The reason this is so nice is because the arena's really tough if you try to do it by yourself. Even I feel like it's tough. It just feels like you're running in circles around this monster not doing any damage because you have these, you know, pre-made weapon setups, damage setups, and they're not very good, obviously, but the reason that they're not very good is because there's supposed to be two of you playing against these monsters, so it's balanced for two players. So the tip really is don't go into the arena by yourself. Always bring a friend. Now you know why you can't SOS. You have to do it with the sessions, right? You have to create a session or you have to join a session and go in there and get your arena coins so that you can make your armor and your weapons. All right, and that is going to be the top 10 things you didn't know, episode three. I want to thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys next time.